I'm going to start off this lesson by modifying the sauce on this bottom bun so that only the extremities have this bulbous feel. So basically what I'm trying to simulate is that where it's flowing from, it's not as thick as where it has reached its peak, right? So I just need these edges, these extremities to be bulbous. It's visible in the reference and it would be with any uh, sauce that's leaking, right? At the edges over here, you're gonna see it's a lot thicker than sort of at these places where it's flown off the cliff of the bun. There are still some bulbous areas over there, but I'd rather pull it all down and then build up those bulbous areas where they are specifically located. I'm gonna do that with a trick. So I'm gonna hide everything. And what I'm going to do is make sure back face masking is on. And I'm going to mask because I don't want to get the back side. I just want this top surface to be impacted. So I'm going to start masking like this. Very close to here. Some of these regions like so. Okay, so now that I've gotten the edges, I'm going to go get the central portion all right so all this is going to be modified to be flush so if i solo and i look behind none of this really should have been selected yeah because i guess i forgot to turn i mentioned turning off back face but you have to actually turn it off on the masking tool so i'm going to hold down control to get the masking tool then turn on back face masking and i'm going to remove it here because I don't want this the technique I'm about to use I don't want it to impact the backside only the top that was masked so I'm gonna go here remove all this So it's nowhere on the back side. That's good. And I'm filling these voids. There's some voids here. Seem to be impacted. Okay, so we look good. So now what I'm going to do is control click to invert the selection and then do one blur. And that's about enough. And then I'm going to unsolo and go to the project project tool, which is really down here. But I'm just going to make sure colors turned off. I don't need that. And I'm going to basically tell it to project so that it's hitting this button. It's probably also going to try to hit the other side of it, uh, of of this sauce, the inner mesh, the back side of the mesh. But it doesn't matter. I just need it to be flush with one of those two but mostly the bun so i'm going to go project all so then it slams it onto the bun so now the bun has it and just to give it a slight bit more thickness i'm going to go to deformation and go to inflate and give it 0.2 so that it's just a little bit above the surface and so now it's a lot more flush and that's what i was trying to do so it should be a lot more flusher with the surface, except at the extremities. Okay, so that's the first thing I want to do before I start finishing these primary forms. Okay, the other thing I want to do is take this bun and just move it back a little. Okay. Next thing I'm going to work on is these pickles. I'm going to get them out of this faceted state and this one needs sauce extruded for it. So I'm going to select it first, do a little bit of scaling up and then solo it and divide. It's the harsh edge. That's good. Divide one more time and delete lower. And then I'm going to dynamesh it. That's too small. So I'm going to dynamesh it at a much significantly higher resolution. That should be fine. That might be too much. Once I uncheck this dot, it lets it go as far as you're telling it to go. Still awfully dense. 
Okay. That should be fine. And now, just so it's not a perfect cylinder, I'm going to give it some noise. Just bang it up just a little bit, just some initial noise. Most of it is obscured, so it's all it's up to me to decide what type of detail goes over here. So I'm going to go to surface, go to noise, uh, frame it. Actually, before I come here, I'm going to create a layer so that whatever I'm doing goes on a layer. Turn off this so I can see what's happening. Go to surface, go to noise, and I want really large scale noise. So I'm going to crank up this noise scale really high. So I'm seeing level. It doesn't have a UV, I'm just gonna stick with 3D over there. And let me make the strength a little bit higher. Okay. If I apply to mesh, it's gonna be really distorted. And I can just come over here. Should be able to reduce. No, that was just, I'm going to undo that. That was simply too much noise. Scale is just insane. The strength actually is, that's insane. So I'm going to stick with something smaller. Let me apply to mesh. Yeah, that's a good amount of banging up. So I'll take it, it's on the layer. So if I really wanted to, I can control that layer to reduce it. I'm going to save that, add a new layer. And what I'm going to do next is go to deformation. And I just want to just smooth out this. Uh, it's edges just a little bit. Sorry, the side plane, the viewing plane, the plane we're viewing, because that's the shell of the cucumber or pickle. And the, the de detail is a lot smoother. So is that, but for now, I just want to have them have a variance in breakup. And this one, I want it to be a lot smoother. So I want to come over here, invert that, lower once, and then just smooth. Run a few smooth operations. And that should suffice. Okay, something like that. See what it looks like okay so that's a good starting point now my primary concern is getting that sauce extracted from it so I'm gonna get just my masking tool and start painting what I want to be extracted the front is going to I'm going to try to match exactly what I'm seeing in our reference but as we get behind it, I'll take liberties doing what I think will work. So here, I'm not going to do too, make the back area too complicated. I just still look good. Like I'll let the front be the most complex part of it, and then the back would just be, since we're really not going to see it that much, I'm not going to put in too much work. So I have all this. So, okay. okay, that's about right. Feels about right. If it doesn't, I'll adjust it. So I come down here to extract and I'll set it to 0 0.01. That should be fine. Extract. That's a lot. So 0 0.001 is what I meant to type in. So extract. And that's cool. I'll accept that. Go to deformation and smooth it out at the edges. Then release it. Okay, so that's a good starting point. I want to do just a little bit of build up just to get us started.
When I'm using clay build, build up, I like to use alpha 58. Make some more organic shape rather than. The really box like feel. So I'm just gonna give it some surface detail, initial surface detail. So, nice tubular forms that uh, recede, a sort of a peak at the central part these ones climbing up. The ones on the side have a lot more interesting shapes, so I'm going to do spirals and stuff. This is just a quick block out. Come over here and really take care of this. And also when it's eventually welded, it'll have a lot more, get a lot more attention. That should suffice. So I'm gonna saw this is the starting point. I'm gonna do something similar to this, but here I'm gonna focus on making sure it has the grooves that it needs. So here too, I'm going to divide twice scale it up, delete lower, and with Dynamesh, I'll take that circle off and Dynamesh it. That's pretty fine. Actually, no, I like the edges to be slightly crisper on Dynamesh. Okay, that should work. Okay, now I'm going to start hinting at the grooves from the front just to know what I'm supposed to be aiming for. At the front, we have a particular, really large one here. One, two, three, four, or five, about five across. We have this big one here. We have another one here. We have another group here. And this one is, I think the lighting information makes the bottom feel dark, but it's there, so. And then this, I'll treat like the side of the pickle, so it won't have any more grooves when we get past here. And the same goes for this. There seems to be two here, and then I'll treat this as the side. So what I mean by that is when I go up top, if this is going to be the side of the pickle, and this is gonna be the side of the pickle, then the grooves are going to come in between these. So this first groove would be like that, like that, like that, and then I think I could get one more groove in there, here, here, and then this is the side, this entire part is the side. So same thing here, the groove comes like this, groove comes like this, and I'll let this be the side. So then that helps me figure out where on the other side I have the extruded part, what's extruded and what's a groove. And then now I can push these in to get the grooves on the side. And I'll do the same for the front where it's most important to push this in their grooves. And we'll really come and deal with them later. It's just a nice simple block out. I'm going to clean them up a little bit more. This one is appears to be a little bit shorter than it should be. So I'm going to take this and take the mask off first. Make sure it's fairly tall. And this one, there's some of the shapes. They're doing some things that I, I want to be able to pick up right now. So this one is very clearly has like a diagonal feel to it. This one has like this, more of a, yeah. 
help to break up the shapes over there. Just a little bit of clean up. And this one I really see some very interesting mound design here. Just want to put it in, a little bit of it in. There's going to be a lot more detail describing these like pimple like forms later. So I got this little diagonal here. This one feels very, feels like there's like this eating away part here. I know it's like the shadow information, like it might be providing misleading data, but I'm still gonna put it in, in worst case in error. When the light hits it, if it's not looking right, then I'll fix it. Just make it a regular tubular. But I doubt it's going to hurt it. I think all this is going to add a value. Okay. Some of these shapes. Most of this sculpting is going to be coated in several layers of detail. And then there's something I can also use as a landmark that I'm seeing here, which is a dip here. I think it is. Two hilly peaks, and it also exists here where it splits these two hilly peak there. And this one is not as aggressive, but it's there. Okay, I'm just starting this has like a, a little bit of a swooping feel. Yeah, I'm gonna really work hard to make this thing look exactly alike, at least from the front. So, it is just the beginnings. Yeah, just a little bit of putting in these landmarks that I'll come in or find later. Very rough. See a little bit of that peak-like effect here too. Looks like this is down. This is like peaking. Yeah. Oh, this is good. Breaks it up. Stop makes makes them stop looking like primitives. So good start. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is start preparing this top bun to receive its detail. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm gonna start by taking the Z remodeler brush. I want to try to separate the shell from the in yards so that I can work on the crumbs and the shell separately. I'll also create a separate piece for the singe. All these will remain separate for a fairly long time and then at, towards the end they'll be welded together just like most of the elements that I've discussed will be welded together. I'm going to zoom in here, right click on this and go with the Z remodeler brush selected, I'll go poly group and poly loop. And then I'll really zoom in, size down the brush, and make sure that the arrow is pointing. Let me get in there more. And solo this. Make sure the arrow is pointing here. And that way, when I click on it, I get a poly loop on the entire lip. Once I have that, I can isolate the inyard from the shell and go auto group and it should give them two separate poly groups. It should. Yes. I'm gonna group this just to not confuse myself because it seems to want to give it that green color. Okay. So I have the ability to separate all these shells. So what I'm going to do now is from this, I can retrieve two of the pieces I'm looking for. Top bun original copy. 
Then I'm going to duplicate from that. Create another duplicate and yet another one. This one is going to be crumbs in arts or let me say in art top bun in arts or crumbs. This will be top bun singe and this will be top top bun shell. So for the crumbs all I need is this inside part. So I'll isolate it and go delete hidden. For the singe, it's mostly at the edges, the outskirts. So I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of breathing room. I'll take this. No. Okay, I'll isolate it like this. And then I'll grow the selection. So I will grow, grow, grow. Do a little bit more growing. So I have about that much. That seems to be about okay. I'll group it and group visible. And I'll try to take some away from there because I have too many rows up here. So I'll try to take the poly group tool again and try to just get one edge. Oh, it looks like I forgot to delete hidden, so I have to make sure I delete hidden. And quite frankly, I could just do this to all the edges. Might be just a little quicker. Okay, so I should be able to now isolate this piece and delete hidden. Okay, so this will be used to create the singe at the lip. It will remain hidden for the most part. Right now, I'm just going to focus on the shell and the innards. For the shell, it's going to be slightly different. What I'm going to do with that is delete the crumb, the flat inside, and go delete hidden. And then I'm going to grab my Z Remodeler tool again. And this time I'm going to group visible. And this time I'm going to go for an extrude operation. So I'll say extrude all polygons, and then just pick this and then intrude to get somewhat of a shell. Now I have it the other way around so I need to make sure the normals are pointing in the correct direction so I'm going to go to display properties and go flip. Let me solo it to see what I have. Okay so this is good but whilst I'm sculpting the detail on the shell I don't want to have to worry about the inner inside but I do want some of its lip here. So I'm going to go back to the Z Remodeler brush and go poly group, poly loop, and try to just get one row over there. So with that row gotten, I can isolate the insides, auto group, and then all I need to do now is get rid of this inside part. So this will be the shell geometry. So I'll just go delete hidden. Right, so if I unsolo, I should have all three pieces. The singe I can hide for now. I don't need that. I want to focus on this, which is going to be the crumbs on the inside and this shell. Okay. okay so for now, I'm going to grab that crumb layer and try to move it so that it's inside the shell. I don't want it poking out. Let me do some organization here. Bottom sauce. Actually, let me go sauce. Bottom. This is the original copy that the shells are created from. I'm going to put that inside this trash folder. 
is my way of keeping geometry for as long as possible and not deleting it immediately just in case I made a mistake and I need to revert. I can go get it back from the trash. So let me put the top button into a folder, all the elements into a folder so I can more easily deal with them. So for now, I'm gonna just hide all this stuff. So I can focus on making sure that this crumb layer is sitting underneath the shell. Now I'm going to give it some rough primary detail. So I'm going to add a layer, go to my surface, and give it some just noise at this subdivision level. Frame. And I do want some large scale noise. I'm going to go OK. And this seems pretty good. I'm going to go to Apply to Mesh. That's some good noise detail to start with. Now I'm going to just keep a copy of it. Go to my layers and bake this information in. I'm going to divide it about twice and then do some interesting masking with alpha 8. You know what that's going to allow me to do? Let me make sure I have a dot selected. What color spray? Actually, let me get a larger brush. So I'm going to get some color spray, and the objective of this is to do somewhat of a breakup of the surface detail. So if I go sharpen mask. Like a, I should actually use a more abstract shape. There is an abstract shape. So I'm going to go to the default ZBrush folder. And these shapes right here are pretty good for this kind of stuff. So I'm going to hold down my alpha and get like this abstract selection. I'm going to blur mask and what I'm going to do with this is just deflate just a little this is just to break up the surface detail in an interesting way and the next thing I want to do is apply an interesting effect that I usually use for burgers, but it also works for creating these really crescent randomized shapes on things like buns. Let me make sure that this is, there are no gaps. So I add a layer, go to surface noise, go to noise, and this time I want to make some edits. I don't want it to be this large. I'm going to play with curve function. Okay. okay, and then I'm going to go to surface and apply. And for some apparent reason, if you do it again, go to surface, noise, apply. I need to do it a few more times. If I go noise, go to edit, just crank 
up his strength a little. Uh, what it feels like is I have enough for subdivision levels. Let me go to bake all go to surface noise. Yeah, it, it, you get these like really crescent looking shapes that feels like crumbs. Now the geometry is truly distorted. So I'm going to have to rely on projection onto a cleaner mesh, but that will happen at the time of projection when I've combined all these pieces and I'm projecting the detail onto one mesh. But for now, I'm just gonna use a move brush to just get it in place and fill these gaps. It'll be detailed a lot more to break it up because right now it just looks like uh, the same monotonous detail and that's never good. So you really want to have this, all these details look different and so that the eye doesn't feel like it's looking at the same thing. But this is a good start just to get some primary shapes for the crumbs. You usually only have to apply the effect twice, but I guess I was on too low of a subdivision level. So it wasn't responding correctly. Now, if you were to go close to a, a top bun like this, the detail wouldn't be this strong, but it's very important when you're sculpting to overemphasize detail because that's the only way your maps that you're going to rely on in your 3D application are going to be able to show the detail if you've overemphasized them. So you're gonna see that a lot over here. I'm gonna look at the reference and I'm going to make sure to overemphasize the detail so that our 3D application can and receive it correctly. Okay, so this is a quick block out of the crumbs. Yeah, it's, it's going to look a lot sharper as more details are added, but for now, this will suffice. Now I'm going to take this shell, start smoothing it out a bit in preparation. It's detail. Duplicate the shell. I'm also going to start by giving it just a little bit of really large scale noise. This will also go on the layer for the surface for the noise. And I really want some large scale noise. Let me apply that and see what it looks like. Okay, that's a little bit too aggressive. Completely distorted it. Let me see if apply it first, go to layers and see if I can tone down this layer to 0.2 and see what it's doing. Just a little bit of surface distortion. Just gives it a little bit of a more natural feel. It has a lot of good surface detail, but one thing I want to start off by doing, so I'm going to take my trim dynamic brush and start hacking away at this to give it some interesting planar shapes closer to the edge as value to buns just some in strategic areas just got the, the lip some of the top might benefit from it too. It's not too much. Okay, 
Okay, so for the granular detail, I'm not going to focus on it too much now. But I'm going to go to the back side and start hinting at those shapes that I want in the back here. Start hacking at to get these striations in there. So the one that's closest, hack away. interesting shapes there. This is a very prominent one. Hack it in. to get some of those planar shapes into so as I build this up to make sure Just outlining the shapes that I'm seeing and, and get to designing them later. Even though what I'm doing right now isn't necessarily the form, it's outlining some shapes that my eye is seeing and it will, the form will be fleshed out better later. So here's definitely an inset that comes from Backside also has a more bulbous feel to I'll try to get it shortly. I'll work on this clean break. here.
this. Let me just get the notable ones that I can see very well. And this definitely recessed. And here, also, big depression. Put the lower subdivision level and make this this feels more bulby, more mushroom like shape. I'm gonna pull them out. chipping of the edge detail that I'll get to after I've started to flesh out these shapes. Now that I think I know what's happening here, let me, because I'm looking straight on here and I'm having a difficult time figuring out what I'm looking at in this central part. Push some of it just a little bit more. I'm seeing some folding that goes here. So now that's evident. Let me see if I can cut it on subdivision one. And possibly see if I can get one of them in there. That. Okay. And then appears to be some here too. taper off the effect without getting it to the front side. This is all invention based off of what I've seen on from the reference on the back side. So it seems to be a triangular depression here. And it marries into this depressed area. So 
I'm gonna get a lot of this good randomized information from the reference and then work to take it to where it needs to be. Sometimes it's hard to just stay pinned on one material. You start not seeing things. truly get away with taking the detail from both of these buns and combining them. Make it a look cool. I'll make sure I add more here to blend that side in to the fact to the front which isn't as busy as this back is gonna be. I'm going to push these major uh, landmarks or these major shapes I'm going to clarify them and make them outline them a lot better. So you're going to see me make them a little bit more intense than they actually are in the reference. Because as I mentioned before, with ZBrush, with sculpting, you really have to push whatever you're seeing in order for the maps to be able to capture it. So for now, I'm going to hide everything else just so I can focus on this. I'm going to start here and push these plane breaks so that it's know exactly what you're seeing so this plane break I'm gonna go uh, I'm gonna take the clay brush and build this up so I can pull it up even and make this a lot crisper. I'm trying to, I shouldn't be marrying forms right now. I'm just want to outline them, but I want to start thinking about marrying some of them. This is separation worth noting. This also appears to be a plain break, but it marries a lot better. Okay. Okay. Now this, I'm going to build up It's a flat plane, but it's housed by this more of this Y shape. It is a planar surface, so I'm going to try to build it up first and then start hinting at the fact that it's cleaner surface. Same thing with this. thing I definitely want to emphasize is those plane breaks. Even if they look abnormally outlined, it's good for now because when I come back, I'll be able to really push them. 
this is also really pushed here. And this is a flatter surface, so I'm going to flatter surface feel rather than this weirdly depressed region. I'm using the way the light is rolling off the surface to determine what is depressed and what isn't. This one I think works pretty well. It's deep enough. And then here, same deal. And this is more In the past, I would take my cloth brushes and use them to fabricate this type of folding detail, but I'm not doing that here. I want to really... get this thing right. So that the final piece will benefit from all these cool visuals. The central part is the toughest, so when I get to the central part, because it's a little harder to see what's happening, I'm going to take the liberty to make some decisions just to hint at the type of folds I'm going to see over there and the type of planar behavior I'm going to see over there. But it's also good to leave it because it's good contrast detail though. So. Important to not make sure, just like we're seeing in the reference, the entire thing is not covered in folds. Like this part is really open and it looks cool. Helps to create a focal point. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. To accentuate this plane break. Use the clay build up. And also this plane break. Treat this to such. It's very easy to feel lost and confused at this stage. So like the objective is to pull as much as you can. And have a nice little framework to really push the stuff. Okay. Get that. 
One thing I'm seeing here is a nice little form like this. That's producing another plane break here. These are good outlines. Again, I'm not gonna marry anything. That's really for secondary sculpting stage. So I'm just gonna keep outlining these. And really it's, in this instance, I think I've done a fairly good, just accentuating that plane work. I put the main stuff in there. Okay, that's an initial good fleshing in on the primary forms. further but when I come in here and start if, uh, clarifying these and adding and marrying these masses and it'll be a lot of invention and also then I'll start to do this chipping of the edge I'm gonna go to the front and see if there's anything I could do if there's in, there are enough big shapes that I should consider putting in and not really but there's not a lot here to start putting it at this stage. So I'm going to just try to do my own type of this really life form building. I should be using the form soft. Keep it light. Help to outline some shapes that will later be pushed. And not go too much. Cool surface detail. direction, shape, and stroke type so we don't end up with the same. Even though this is going to be the underlying mass, um, we still don't want to have any mechanical sculpt detail. It's going to be covered by a lot of data. So we want to try and this and 
Yeah, I know this looks awkward, this little in, in the art here. You'll see how it looks like when I project initially, I'll pull some of this data. So I have a few crumbs on the inside of bread here to see what it's what it looks like. And so you see that that's just like what it, what I have now is like an initial uh, shape that's going to be hacked at to get these nice recessed areas, and it's just like a base. So all this is going to help me get to something that is very bread-like. All right, now I'm going to start fleshing out some of these primary shapes of the patty. So I'm going to start blocking in a lot of this data here. I'm going to divide, use my build up at a fairly high intensity. I'm just start getting in some of these shapes that I'm seeing. The bottom side is more bulby, has a lot more bulby masses. I'm gonna try to pick them apart. Any landmark shapes I can get, any prominent shapes, I'll put them in so they can guide my eye later. And here is a big depression. So it's shrouded in so much shadow. Get the later. some of these shapes here. here.
This is a big, dark, shadowy mass. I'll zoom in later to see what I'm supposed to be fleshing out over there. But get the top. Let's move this a little. Make way for these shapes. You're really trying to look at these really complicated shape. Try to find the simplest shape that represents it initially. Trying the best to get the proportions right. space for this. I have invaded it a little bit too much. And it looks like this. After the front has been clarified, I'll use the same logic to invent for the sides that I can't see. But that's why it's good to do this first iteration of trying to match what you see so you're, you get used to what it is that is on here and know what to put on the other on the sides when you're inventing. But now it seems like a lot more bulbier forms at the bottom where the meat is not all the way charred. And then more flatter, planar shapes on the top. I'm trying to capture that crevice really well. Creating visual, using visual plumb lines to guide myself a lot better. I'm just So this massy part. for now. As we cut, things will get better.
careful what you're looking at, whether it's shadow or charred meat. You want to be careful not to make a depression where there's supposed to be the opposite. This is supposed to be sitting on top of this cliff, this charred cliff. Move it and this landmark. Such. Try to use the same type of logic to invent on this side. But well, I have enough information for this, so I'll do a little bit of building. something happening here which I really like So the invention is going to start heavily here. Just make sure to follow some of the rules that I was seeing in the front. Break up these shapes. Here. just to get started. just pepper in detail because you see from the front that a lot of the interesting shapes stay at the lower half and the top you kind of really want to leave it open to receive the crustacean here let me move this a little to the side there's a depression here that I never really dealt with so it exposes more of this top area for design Okay, so for the back, I don't have a reference for that, but I'm going to play around. Well, not too much, but I'm going to try to do something that... Let me hide this top one. And really process this. In the spirit of keeping this area charred, I'm going to define a lip with my build-up brush that will act as like 
the separator for the charred part and the bulbous part at the bottom. And let me choose to make this a recessed area. I don't care about that separation. And then I'll move to make these bulbous shapes. Actually, they're not all the same size. They're characterized by the variance in uh, detail. The contrast in detail at the base. I don't want to push that. I think it's just a fair amount of detail. We'll leave this as that. And then up here, if you want these larger, flatter forms. That will be the charred information. Okay. And then, same deal here. I want to define that separation between the charred top. Here, I admit I'm being a little bit, uh, it could end up starting to feel a little mechanical if. I don't make uh, these uh, bold choices with these different type of abstract shapes. And so I'm going to try to avoid uh, just doing the same type of thing. Here I'm going to build a form. with some procedural effect or a handful of procedural effects and a whole bunch of hand sculpting to make sure this back doesn't look so crazy. Some good initial shapes forming. Okay. Seems fairly pushed. sides two. Before I do that, I'm going to see what the front is telling us is happening. So I have this hilly part in the front. Is this really these were this side? Right, let's start. Is this like tubular massing? But that shelf is very prominent. some bulby shapes here but it's important there's um, this shape that I'm going to put on the lower subdivision level so it's more cliff like feel and go back up and start putting in some interesting shapes here Some 
logic here my benefit in the beginning to discover these successful shapes It's very important to not code this entire thing in in, in detail. I really just need some parts where you know, I like to have a good amount of uh, detail contrast, or in this instance, bulby contrast. Here, kind of making shapes and then they're creating uh, highlighting these outlines and then you kind of push them to some true natural formations and it's tough really trying to refrain from doing the same thing but we're accustomed to that where uh, just doing the comfortable thing. Even though you see me yeah, and it looks like I'm doing the same tubular shapes, I'm trying as much as possible to vary my strokes. super occluded. similar shapes that are evenly spaced apart. That's something you definitely should avoid. And all of these shapes that appear to be easy to outline with the eye, they're going to be completely disappear. As this thing progresses, you're not going to be able to outline a shape with your eye perfectly. It's going to be blended really well at the secondary form stage. So I'm going to turn this back on. See what we have so far with that. Looks good. So you're always going to see me come to the front, try to match the reference exactly get the training I need from doing the front and then go do the sides and the back to make sure they match. So it's, that's really going to be the workflow. When it comes to the bottom bun, I acknowledge that a majority of it is covered in meat juice or liquidated cheese. 
and looking at it, it's pretty hard to outline the detail. Now in certain areas, in certain areas like this here, the detail is more evident, but even still it's shrouded in darkness or charred meat. And I'm really counting on this to give me the information I need to do the detail on the rest of it, on the sides and the back. And this main reference for the back has a different type of meat, which I don't really want to, I don't want to mimic that because it's going to look a little disconnected if it doesn't feel like it's the same, the meat was created on the same grill. So I am going to use some of the techniques up here, down here, but I'm going to start with a trick. And I showed you a little bit of it when I was creating the crumbs for the top bun, but I'm going to use it to, for the burger here. I'm going to create a burger meat effect just to get some detail to start off with. And then I'll start shaving away what I don't need and adding the forms that are visible, like these forms over here. I can see them better and over here. And I'll be doing a lot of invention to get everything else that's going to be shrouded in liquid in the back and the sides. So to do that, use that burger technique, I have four pieces, so I'm going to have to do it on all four. Let me try to, I'll duplicate this folder. All the sub tools in it, hide the original and start here. I'm going to need a fair amount of subdivisions to do this. So I'm going to go to about subdivision level four for each. Okay, so everybody's at four subdivision levels and I'm going to start the effect. So I'm going to go solo, start with one. And I'm going to start masking regions just so I can vary the effect. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. I'm going to go to noise. I'm going to make sure my noise is fairly high, high strength. And increase the scale to two for this first one and go OK and apply to mesh. And then I'm going to go noise again and apply to mesh. And so this is the first version of it. And then I'm going to invert and I'm going to do a little bit. I'm going to change the settings for this part. So this part, I'm going to maybe play with my curve down here maybe set my noise to maybe three. So I get some larger shapes. Go OK. Apply to mesh. Go noise one more time. Apply to mesh. And that should be, yeah, that should be a good starting point. All right, so I'm going to do a similar thing all around and then I'm gonna start really sculpting. Uh, away a lot of this information or putting in the larger scale shapes that I need. I guess this is going to give me some medium size shapes and I'm really going to try to vary it as much as possible so they don't look anything close to each other and I just have a nice varied thing to start off with. So here too I'm going to go solo and then I'm going to mask certain regions. and start with a noise. I'm going to try to increase it like this time. This time I'm going the other direction. I'm going to go in the other direction. And the noise about two. Two is a lot. Let me go. Let me apply to mesh. But that's a bit tough. That's a little bit too much. I'll go over here and the strength is simply too much. So I'll go, okay. Apply to mesh. 
noise, apply to mesh again, noise, apply to mesh, and invert, and then I'm gonna change the settings this time, go a little, change the curve, go back in the opposite direction. And try to increase this to about three. Apply to mesh. And that really should suffice. This, yeah, looks varied enough. Change it. Okay, yeah, I'll be coming over here to sculpt these large shapes that I need here. Mimicking what's happening on the top. All right, so here, I'll do the same. I'm gonna solo it. Mask. This time, I'm going to try some really large scale detail. So I'm gonna go here, increase the noise. Okay, apply to mesh, noise, apply to mesh. Okay, now I'm going to invert it and go to noise, edit, try something different, bring the scale down, increase the strength, go okay, apply to mesh, that's not enough. Might have. too much with the curve this is about good okay apply to mesh noise apply to mesh I'll take that okay and we have one more to do all right so well you gotta be very careful with these mechanical operations and try as much as possible to do things that produce varied results. So even this masking I'm doing, I could get a little bit more creative with what I'm using as a mask. Uh, maybe sometimes cut in and just get some different type of shapes other than these crescent shapes that I'm making. So even something like this, using a hard shape like this, looks like it would be a stupid idea, but it'll produce something interesting. All right, so a little noise. I'll go with large scale again, close to about seven. Yeah, all that detail right there. It'll translate very well. Okay, apply to mesh. Noise, apply to mesh. Noise, apply to mesh, okay. And then invert, go to noise, edit. Try something else with the curve. Come down, increase strength a little. Okay, apply to mesh, noise, apply to mesh. Okay, so there's your initial detail. I'm going to inspect the geometry to see if it's completely destroyed. If it is, I'm going to have to I think they're fine, they're not obliterated a lot of times when you do these noise functions it completely destroys the geometry if it's not destroyed i can go in there and start doing my hand sculpting yeah the geometry doesn't seem that destroyed right? so what i'm going to do now is go in there and start building up detail with the same logic that I used here, which is the top is a lot more charred and planar, and then the bulbous forms, the bulby forms are at the bottom. So I'm gonna use my build up brush, very strong, to start creating some of those effects. Let's see a good place to start using my Damien standard to outline. So 
some shapes before I start fleshing out these bulby masses. And here, I really should, I could try this also, where I outline where this um, top chart area is going to be. Emphasize that it's really hard to prevent yourself from doing the same thing that you got to try. All right, so here I'm going to think a little bit differently. It helps here to also use some brushes that you're not accustomed to. I'll show you some really cool effects that the cloth nudge brushes can do. these shapes when you start making them and they look so abstract they look stupid but when you see the way it looks like on the final uh, rendered result you'll be glad you did it like the variance has had so much value with that top patty I really want it to be as successful as it can be I'm increase the intensity of the brush here see if I can do something slightly different here I'm gonna try to respect these shapes a little bit more I kind of like what I'm seeing here see a lot of small and medium shapes I need like a large shape I get small medium and large shapes in that region here too yeah this is a lot of distorted Mesh is fairly distorted there, so I gotta be careful. Here, I'm gonna stop outlining some. Allow this uh, noise function, the pathway it's giving me to dictate some of the detail, some of the creasing. to the bulby buildup. Now I'm trying to vary the brush size occasionally. And get a nice large mass here for the benefit. Good. Mm. Try not to make everything spaced apart the same way. Yeah, I think that's interesting. 
that's pretty good. The only thing it's lacking here is some recessed parts. Another recess. Another recessed parts. We'll marry these forms together later. And I'll use a Damien standard, not just as a cutting tool, but a way to also find these broader recessed areas. Yeah, this side is going to be a lot more fun. Inventing on the side is going to be a lot more fun than uh, the front. Right? And then this is definitely something I'm going to have to really consider. Uh, well, for the most part, this is going to be covered, but still, this looks very mechanical. Right? So you don't want this perfect. Um, let me do some inflation here because it's truly damaged. And then use this opportunity to create a crevice. Catch the light, really cool. Might be a little too much. That, that will be detailed a lot more. Yeah, and these are the areas, there's no visible separations. They're hard to spot. So as long as I have a nice, interesting shape here, I think that's all that matters. Let me soften it up a bit. And do some work here. Really damaged geometry. Usually, you can use the trim dynamic to unravel broken geometry like that. Maybe the other side too. Just trim dynamic to unravel it. to do like this cavernous dig in there. Okay. It's kind of baffling to me that with all this geometry here, oh, there is not that much geometry there. Let me try to, okay. I think there's enough information there to do stuff. It looks like there is. I need to block out stuff. Be fine. See if I can get here too. Okay. So this should suffice for this bottom bun. In the spirit of really pushing these shapes, I know that this needs to be a lot more. A little bit more aggressive here, some errors, get some variance in intensity. You don't want nothing to look just flat. And it looks like this is another area where to be very careful about it looking super mechanical. It's like a bit, basically almost perfect straight line. At least now we get a crevice. And uh, 
occlusion can work its magic over there. Let me make sure it's an actual nice shape. to design it a lot more. I'll leave it alone for now. Yeah, so it's good amount of varied shape for the burger meat. Okay, I'm gonna to come to the front here, make sure that uh, my detail matches my reference as best as I can. Kind of got a little overexcited here. This has information. And to do that, I might need to fix this cheese it's flush. Has like a mound. There are some other forms here. And more granular shapes. Lead up. I'm gonna grab this, and mute out this detail so I can put what I'm seeing. It's really great that this separation here landed at the right place because it allows me to create this crevice. Make sure that this is behind the cheese. It'll catch a lot of occlusion. For here, I need that. Circular shape. Okay. And then here. I want another a little bit more depressed area here. Sure, majority of this is depressed, that or it's char, and then we have a mound here. And this cheese comes down, it looks like it's another big wad of it that is depressed that comes here. In this top area, it looks like there's a nice little plane break. Yeah, I'm gonna start hinting at it. 
And then there's a lot of radiating shapes outward. Here, I'm just going to block them out a little. Might need an additional subdivision level just to get them in. happy over there with the sides. One thing that I'm noticing is that after making the sauce at the bottom bun flush, I have a little bit of negative space here that has to be resolved. Make sure it's flush. And I created a lot of shapes there, but here it's really, I'm gonna go to a lower subdivision level and make sure I'm getting like more flatter, more recessed region here. I will have to invent a lot of that, but at the lower subdivision level, I'm going to crank down the detail and focus on getting that recessed look. It'll still keep all the detail on the higher subdivision levels, but the larger block of shape will be controlled by the lower subdivision level. Okay. So that's more recessed. And then when I go up, all that detail is still there. Bringing this down a lot more to cover. There's like a moundy mass here. detail here and almost likely change yeah that's not good not flush cheese pouring down and it doesn't seem to be flush so I have to be careful so make sure they're touching all right I'm gonna go back and forth and do some fixes all over and then I'll also start bringing this cheese closer to what it looks like in the reference, this sauce and this cheese. And then I'm gonna go around and do the same for all the cheese that's exposed around. And then probably start fleshing out the shapes over here. But I'm gonna be doing a, hand, a lot of cleanup. If uh, the lesson is getting on to three hours, then I'll save the rest for later. But if I can get all of it done in this lesson, if I can get all the primary forms fleshed out and polished in this lesson, then in the next lesson, I'll just be doing secondary forms and marrying all these primary forms of everything and dealing with this crumb mesh, which I'm really going to be doing something unique with it to be able to pull out some of this detail, just some of it, and then leave other areas for more sharper detail. And then I'm going to show I think I've already shown the reference of crumbs that I'm going to use, but I'll have a separate reference sheet for crumbs and I'm going to try to match what is on that reference sheet, but I need to pull out some of this uh, data that I created with noise. But for now, I'm going to close these gaps. These gaps are not going to project too well when it's time to project onto my final top bun, which would be a combination of the shell, the crumbs and the singe layer which I've hidden so I'm going to get the move tool try to 
one thing I'm noticing is that this particular layer is for some reason just collapsed onto itself. So I have to make it's a little too strong, but I'm gonna to try to inflate. There we go. Just to get some of the thickness back. Because it lost it during the sculpting process. And it's making a the crumb peer through. It's too much. That's boring because I'll be touching this up a lot. That edge has a very chippy feel from both reference sources for the bun. It has like a chipped edge. So I'll be trying to accomplish that. I think it'd be best to do it after I've welded the elements of the top bun. So I might save it for that part of the process. I don't think I'll be doing the chipping at this stage. Let me grab the move tool and try to close these gaps. It's not looking good. More important that I close this negative space because when it's time to project, it'll start reaching for areas it shouldn't reach for to find the data to define that part. I think I should resolve this. It's fine. I should be able to pull it down. Yeah, it's fine. Let me hide this stuff so I can do this. This is the old chunks. I'm going to move it into trash. So I'm going to go merge up. That's how I put stuff in trash. And just fix this. I have to also get very used to just putting in a lot of like rough randomized detail and then be ready to just play with it for however long you need to to just get it to what you you need what your final is supposed to look like okay i think that closes the shell probably should resolve this This cheese is penetrating. I'm going to select it. It's not the cheese, it's the sauce. Then I'm going to turn on transparency to see how bad it's penetrating. And select the affected area with mask lasso. And blur a bit. just to get it out. Turn transparency back off. And try to get this out of here. Okay. So that works. Turn everything back on. I'm going to try to get this sauce as close to completion to its primary forms as everything else around it because too faceted right now. So I'm going to do it for the sauce and the cheese. I'm going to add a few subdivisions to both of them. Divide twice. Looks like it's creased. I don't know when I did that. I'm going to turn this off and start. Shaving away at this edge just to lose that creased feel. And I'll do the same for the cheese. Shouldn't have. These are two pieces that are definitely going to be welded together. Alright, 
So with this cheese, I'm noticing that it has a really bulby, uh, really nice teardrop shape that I want to be able to capture. Let me see if I can use the inflate tool to do it. It has like this really inflated look. There we go. That blends very nicely into pull this side out a bit. This looks like it could use a little bit more shaving. So it gets a nice pouring feel. These ones are not too hard. And continue shaving this all the way to the back and smoothing to it. To let it get its correct fluid light shape. with this cheese and how it's pouring it looks like it has a significantly sharper tip I'm gonna to move to the cheese over here I had to do a lot to try to make this look a lot more interesting especially when we get past the recessed area it feels like this will benefit from being allowed to pour onto the sauce and touch it. So I'm gonna do that so that it's not so burger heavy back here. I'm going to try to be really strategic with it. I really like this uh, that the front also kind of had but I'm going to try to be a little bit more a different look back here and I do like a, a build up these interesting builds build ups that make it feel gooey have to change my build up brush to make sure it has the right alpha. I like this circular alpha. It always produces better organic shapes. Your forms here. Sometimes I like to do this thing too where it's dual tubular masses. You just have to keep track of it. Make sure you build them up. They look really good, really nice sometimes. And with this stuff, sometimes you take the Damien standard brush and you just let it guide your choices like just get like have this flowy uh, 
experimental stroking process and some of the shapes will just sort of come to you right, you'll have a lot of shapes that just come to you and once you see it you can go in and you've come up with an interesting shape and go in and then build up around it to get something interesting you know this is cheese so here I'm gonna try that again it's like this really never know what I might end up running into playing around like that. It's like you're looking for compartments. It's usually how you deal with a lot of organic sculpting, just especially when you don't have a reference. But it's always good to first follow the reference. Let it teach you what it is that you're, you're looking at or the type of forms you're supposed to be shooting for and then you can uh, go and start inventing in the areas with the same type of logic. do have a reference for this but I do feel like I want to play here with something a little bit more so this back I'm gonna play around a bit but its initial shapes do follow the re my reference this is definitely a place where I have liberty to just test ideas but with this cheese all around it's it's proof that like you could you really need some interesting overall uh, shapes so the silhouettes for the edges and then the And just a little bit of detail to describe it at its peak, its peaks. The real fun part of this, this sculpting process to me is the marrying of uh, forms, adding secondary forms and marrying these primary forms. It's a very fun process, yeah, but it can be also really hard and it's very tedious too though. So thankfully it's good that it's fun. But it's almost like you're zooming in to all these areas that you were just blocking out. There's some cheese here that should have been smoothed. And in the spirit of keeping up with what is in the front, a nice little attractive bulbous shape at the tip of the cheese. And I could do it also over here. Just smooth this out. Just smooth that away so it's gone. And then a little bulby tip, just because it looks good in the front. Actually, in this instance, I might want to refrain from that because it has a shape that's visible. To close out this lesson, I'm going to take this bottom sauce to the same level that everything is on. So I'm just going to get its primary forms. We started off the lesson by flattening it and now I'm going to try to get the bulbous forms that I'm seeing in the reference. So what I'm going to do is turn on back face masking because it's very thin right now and I want to make sure I'm only impacting one surface, the uppermost surface. And at this stage, it's going to be very difficult to make it look anything close to the reference because this really has to be merged. And after it's merged, a lot of 
work has to be done to blend them together. But I want to make sure it's as close as possible to the reference. So at the very least, I'm going to try to get these forms, these more pronounced forms. And shave away at these edges. They're really going to have to eventually just blend. I'm not even going to bother trying to get, uh, I'm just going to get the general shape and the bulby shapes. All right, so here, there is like this bulbier shape that lets it and transitions into this and then there's like a sort of a recessed area down here. This, I'm really not even going to bother with it too much right now. I think the most I just need, it's streaking down, like just a shape streaking down. And definitely not this far off the surface. One of the reasons why I want to keep it separate for as long as possible is because I like the idea of giving it some, taking it to the tertiary detail stage and giving it some tertiary detail before the welding is done. Let me fix that real quick. I'm gonna fix these errors as I see them. It's supposed to be flush. Okay. This is fairly complicated. swooping shape and then we already emphasized this sort of area here and there is an entire recessed region here let me just hint at it it's important to get these landmarks in I'll help you. Any shape you see, you have to put it in because these shapes I might not. This is going to be the last piece that I get to, so when I get here, I want to make sure I remember uh, a majority of what I've done. And so it's looking like this entire region might end up being covered in cheese, but I'm seeing that I should have dragged a lot more detail. I'm going to take the snake hooks brush, it automatically activates the sculptor's brush, and what that does is that. It allows you to create geometry. So if you turn on, it actually should be doing that. Let me find it. Render, I think it's stroke. Sculptures Pro. Okay, so yeah, it's on my shelf. I'll just turn it on there. And just allows you to pull out fresh geometry. It will resample. Uh, I may have misinterpreted where the shape it's supposed to be. I'm gonna try to make it flush with my move brush now. Ultimately, it looks like there's a streak of fluid on top of it, so when I start making my fluid mesh, I'll deal with it. But this thing looks a little bit more spread. And all this part here that I can't see, I'm pretty sure it's kind of cheese and a mixture of bread. So the blending over there will have to be done really well. But for now, I'm just going to settle with what I think I'm seeing. And these were completely misinterpreted, so I don't think I need these. But I wonder if they hurt. It's OK, I'll leave them over there and use them as form. No, I'll push them in. I think I need them. So it's going to have to be a whole bunch of Sculpting. So I end up sculpting cheese and also that the shading stage is very important to marry all these things together too so it'll be a lot of interesting blending. I'm gonna make sure I turn off sculptures. I'm done with it. Get 
back here. This thing is really, it's a really thin piece over there and it's gonna ultimately need it. I need to blend it with the bread very well, but I just wanna keep it there as a landmark just to remind myself that I should, it will possess uh, sauce properties. And I'm going to pull this down. There's a certain shape there. Make sure it's flush. subdivision so that I can get a better gauge of these forms. This also feels bulby here. And then when we get here, this gets really interesting. Areas like this. I'm going to emphasize them just a little bit more so that they act as landmarks. And this bridge also has the separation that are also really important. So I'm going to use just to split those separations that I'm seeing. It seems this thing has a duality to it. I'm going to try to cut and then it leads to this isolated bulby mass here and a good landmark to help me keep track of what's happening this is not as but here there is like this bulby transition here bulby transition there make sure that it's cut nicely in between and then this is like a tubular flow down. And this is a bulby transition here. So is this. And then the rest of it is a network of sort of like a um, wrinkle logic. There's no such thing with <laughs> flowing uh, things, but it's a good way to just identify that part. And then the outskirts are bulby. And then past that point, it's all invention. But well, one thing I do want to do is over here, this collapsing part of the bread, the sauce tucks underneath it. So I wanna make sure that I do that. So it tucks underneath it and then is like a tubular build up here, which is really the bread. And as we get down, um, there's a tubular form here, which I started hinting at in the previous lesson. Yeah, and all this stuff in here is thin stuff. But it also is something that I don't want to leave out. And it's some of the sauce. I want to make sure I understand that it's not fluid it's actually sauce so there will be a fluid mesh down here to help sell the liquid but in there tucked underneath this section there's some sauce so the way i'm going to represent it is with a sphere i'm going to zoom out and scale the sphere down just let it sit there for as long as i need I'm going to turn on my ground plane, rotate, and flatten, and just have it tucked back there.
just to make sure that it is flush with the ground. So looks like I have the other way around, so I need to hold down shift and alt. And then I'm gonna make sure that I flatten this because it's a planar surface. Get these details in there. It's a lot of things that are happening with this. That's why I picked this. It's a very difficult subject. Uh, and keeping track of all these details. I'm gonna push as far as we can to get all these details. And then when we get to a point, we'll just let go and just start adding to it with sculpting technique. But we have to try as much as possible to capture everything as much of this stuff as we can with simple geometry. Okay, I think that's good. Representation. Okay, so that's that sauce. Now here, I realize this impacts the silhouette significantly, so it does need a fair amount of buildup. As we get here now, I'm going to follow the logic that I saw while working on the front. Be a little bit, take a little bit more liberties. recess certain areas and make sure areas are doing what is expected of them. And every time I see something like this now I realize it feels good to have the outskirts more bulby and then the inside has like this several rippling network of sort of bubbled up fluid. So I'm going to try to maintain that as I go to the side in the back. a little disconnected right now but the task of this stage is not to connect to do that kind of build up and the smaller ripples are hinting at them. Yeah. It's reading correctly. Don't get too crazy. You have to make sure the detail is managed. <laughs> different things here.
in some areas I'm going to try some other things like this dual tubular massing. Started using the Damon standard brush so I get some different type of shapes. Not necessarily just be pulling everything out. challenge trying to figure out some of them some of the cheese is so attached to the bread it looks like a crustacean in some parts I wonder if that will be necessary to put in take an opportunity to preside produce that bulby shape I saw on the cheese in the front and the sauce too. I'm also rely on these more abstract shapes. when it gets to a place like this I have to show that the flow is respecting the collapsing of the bread so I'm going to take that opportunity to show that here and that would apply here too it's like this make it respect that form and on the back here too so I'll make sure that this respects the collapsing bread. That would also be the case here. Yeah, unless it's super, super thick, then it will flow into that crevice and then there'll be more hanging outside, but Should be a pretty good start. In a place like this, when I do this, it can't flow that much if it's going to collapse in there like that. It should be a thinner layer, and this part of it should respect to that collapsing. Get a chance to look at this again soon. I really like how this shoved in portion turned out. See what else has to be done to take it to where it needs to be. It's kind of tough. Some of this stuff you have to wait to the shading stage to see it really come to life but you want to do your best to make sure that it looks as close as possible to the finished thing here there's a little something i want to change i'm gonna i'm gonna go into the transpose tool so i'm gonna go to z plugin transpose master and t pose mesh and i'm going to isolate this and the sauce and mask everything and I want to move this I just there's a the stair stepping effect I don't want to lose it so I just want to just cheat a little bit and get it out there okay. 
Go Z plugin. Zipo subtract. This lesson is now over two hours, so I'm going to end it here. In the next couple of lessons, I'm going to start isolating the various elements of this burger. Starting from the top bun and moving down, I'll start marrying these primary shapes and fleshing out the secondary forms. Everything should start looking correct when the secondary forms are complete. See you in the next lesson.